Hello, how are you? I feel like I'm doing a lot of videos these days. It just seems like it's a very interesting time we're in right now. Not only because of obvious reasons, but I think what's happening or the or what I can understand to the best of my ability to understand is that these shifts that we are all undergoing and again, there are shifts within the collective. There are shifts within each of us personally and individually. And none of us are experiencing everything in the same way, which of course is always true. We don't experience the world in the same way. Um, but we do have similarities and things in common. And times like these, when it feels like we are all undergoing the same things, but even within that, there are differences. And I spoke the other day about how tired everybody is, and I am hoping that's going to shift on the 18th when Mercury goes direct. I hope that's what has been really causing this to be uh, stagnant for the last month. So let's see, let's hope, fingers crossed. Um, the thing is though, I wanna to talk to you today about something a little different. Um, so let's begin at the beginning. When I first started seeing spirit, and I've spoken to you about this at length before, I used to see spirit outside of myself. So like you would see in a movie where someone looks and it looks like there's a ghost standing there. That's how I used to see spirit. I still sometimes see them that way, but mainly now I see them in my third eye or sort of it feels more internally I'm, I'm seeing them, almost like I'm watching a movie or pulling up a memory. Um, but that's not how it used to be at the very beginning. It used to be just like what many of you are afraid of, that you wake up, or you open a door in your room or in your house and all of a sudden there are these shadowy, filmy-like figures moving about and they walk through the wall. Well, that's what I used to see. And when I was first wondering about this and I didn't talk a lot about it to people, now we're going back like over 20 years ago. And I just was trying to figure things out. I didn't even really understand it. I had no idea that I could somehow, uh, control is probably the wrong word, but control my interactions. I didn't understand anything. And I thought it was just something that was happening to me versus something that I was a part of. And so I was never afraid, but again, I didn't really understand much of it. And once I became more aware of what was happening and I learned more and I came to realize what was happening, then a lot of things made sense. But for a long time there, I thought, which like probably a lot of people think, that connecting to spirit or seeing spirit, you know, people think is cool or some people are deathly afraid of it. Um, there's a lot of uh, mystique to it and mysticism and all of these other things that go along with it but really all it is 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 you and me that's what we're going to be doing too when we die we're going to move our consciousness moves you can think of it as expanding outward you can think of it as leveling up uh, it moves from this vibration to another and it's a vibration that moves very quickly because there are no physical forms attached to it. And so that's why we can't see it as readily as we see the trees and the cars and you see me sitting here in front of you. And so that's just a basic uh, understanding of, of energy and spirit energy. And so I wanna come back to this idea that back then I thought that that was the be all and end all. I thought that connecting to spirit that there was a spirit world was everything. I never thought beyond that. In fact, I don't think I even thought there was a beyond that. I thought that was it. I thought that, that people in spirit were the highest vibrational beings. I thought uh, connecting to the spirit world was akin to um, being in some type of mythological heaven. 
you know, I thought that's all it was. And there's nothing wrong with thinking like that. Um, it's just a very base way to see the spirit world. And that's where I was. I was at a very base place because I didn't grow up thinking about it or talking about it. I didn't read any books about it. So just about everything I do has been self-taught. And now, of course, over the years, I have taken a class here or there, or I have a mentorship right now um, that I'm in. But mainly that's just for me to be around other people who are like me. Um, because I've already been working at this. It doesn't mean I don't learn anything. I'm not saying that at all, but that's basically why I join things. It's really for me to learn some things, but also to, to have that, that kinship. Um, and so I went from that place of, you know, the, the spirit world is everything to now having an understanding because I've had further experiences that the spirit world is but one level, one world, one dimension, one, um, one vibration. And there's much more beyond there and much more that I will never know and you will never know. Even when we die, we won't know. And I've come to understand that as best as I can interpret it in my own, my own limited way that, that you and I sitting here on this planet, we are of one dimension, we are one level of frequency, and we can move beyond that, which is what we are trying to do. And then, but we can only do so much while we are in physical form. And for us to connect to anything that isn't in physical form, uh, i.e. spirits, uh, higher intelligent beings, angels, archangels, mythological creatures, on and on and on and on, um, takes practice and it takes uh, a desire as well, because if you don't really care about these things, you're not going to try to do it. And it, it takes a, an endurance um, and a development, if you will. And so what has happened over the years I started seeing beyond the spirit world. And like I said, I thought that's all there was. I thought we died and we went to some kind of spirit world and that that was all there is. And now I've come to see that there's much more beyond that. And the spirit world itself isn't even the highest or the uh, broadest dimension there is. And so it's very fascinating. And so we throw out these numbers, 3D, 5D, 7D, and can we prove any of this? No. And some people disagree on certain levels. And so I always, I always do tell you that, right? They take everything with a grain of salt. And I, the numbers I give you and the things I uh, give you are just so your mind can make some sense of it but you may have your own experience uh, and see things differently. So for instance, again, this planet's very 3D moving into 5D. A lot of people are hmm, circling 4D and they think they're in 5D, but they're really in 4D. That's a whole other message for another day. And then we move beyond that. Uh, you know, once you get into 7D, that's a very healing dimension. That's a crystalline dimension. Uh, that's where the angels start, some people believe. Um, and, uh, and so that's why we don't see them readily. We see them when we die. We see them when we have near-death experiences or some type of trauma. And my experience with angels or archangels is fairly limited. And in part, it's because I've had a resistance to archangels or angels in general because I was brought up Catholic. Um, and even though we weren't devout Catholics by any stretch of the imagination, I think anyone who as a child, when you're taught religious dogma, especially any kind of dogma that that uh, teaches uh, punishment and sin and judgment and all of these hard and fast rules, when you're a child and you take that on consciously and subconsciously, it's in there. It's in there. Even if you don't follow it, it's in there. You need to clean it up. And so for me, when I uh, turned away from religion, I turned my back on all aspects of religion and angels to me were of uh, religious dogma. I didn't think of them as being beings or existing in a different realm. 
and uh, and so I just really didn't care to learn anything about angels, talk about angels. I had friends who were very much uh, enjoyed angels and have angel statues in their homes, and I just was like, yeah, whatever. Um, and then as time went on, and I was working more and more in the spirit world, I would have little glimpses of angelic beings or uh, archangels and one in particular came in <clears throat> excuse me 2016 and he just showed up in my room one day and by the way angels supposedly aren't gendered uh, so I'm saying he because the, the the one I see has feels like a masculine presence but they're not gendered just FYI and he said he would be here for me and I was thinking, what are you even talking about? And he said, um, it's going to be a very trying time for you, but remember I am here for you. And I said, what is your name? And it was kind of garbled and mungled, but I heard something like Ezekiel, something like that. And so the next day I Googled it. Google is your friend when it comes to things like this that you don't know. And, um, and so I, uh, I, you know, I took that on board. I thought about it for a while. And then about two months later, my mother died unexpectedly. And when I looked up Ezekiel, Ezekiel is the angel or the archangel of death and transformation. So he's the guy that all of us would be interacting with quite a bit because he oversees that, uh, that part of our life, the death, the rebirth, the transformation, etc. So that stayed with me, you know, we're going on, actually it'd be four years. Would it be four years? Yeah, four years now. No, almost five years. Almost five years <laughs> since that visit. And anyway, so I'm coming all the way back around because this morning I I just decided to do a little meditation and I was with my guide Tan and uh, he said, do you want to go to a different dimension? I said, sure, because this is what we do sometimes. Sometimes with my guide, I simply... I'm working through something. Sometimes they give me very profound messages to share. Sometimes it's just a, a connection and not much else has to go on. So I was very surprised when I'm with Tan and all of a sudden he brings me to this place and there are archangels there. And I, and I thought, well, that's quite surprising. I was not expecting that. Anyway, long story short, um, this archangel that I, I didn't recognize, it didn't feel like Ezekiel. And I asked his name as well, and he said something like, I thought it said Dezael, Dezael, but it's Raziel. So I had one letter off there. And see, this is the good thing about not doing research beforehand on things, because when it comes to you, then you know you have more confidence in what you were hearing or seeing or feeling, not that you read it somewhere. I'd never heard this name ever. And so um, I looked him up and he is the archangel of, oh, I can't remember now the specific, but he likes to help people with secrets of the world, of the universe, which I thought was very interesting because the, the uh, connection we had or the communication we had was about how my abilities are changing. And so I thought it was interesting because the experience I had with Ezekiel was about was about me and what was going to happen, um, but it felt like he was just sort of guiding me through life's transformations. This angel almost has that, uh, it almost like a specialty, if you will. And so I thought it was very interesting because he deals with people who, um, deal with the, the, the secrets of the universe or uh, work with their, with their abilities in this, their psychic abilities and, and et cetera. So I was like, okay, well that actually made sense, right? Especially for me not knowing anything going to that place. It made sense. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, and I can't remember all he said after. I'm actually going to uh, intentionally try to connect with him again. Um, but I just, the reason I'm telling you this is just so you don't get too caught up in the idea that there's this world, there's death, and then the spirit world, and then that's all there is. Uh, there's much, much, much more beyond that. 
and to be open to that and to be open to we may never know what all that is and by the way even when we cross over and we become spirit ourselves we still won't know everything because that's still a, just a dimension unto itself it's not over it's not the be-all it's not the end-all and so it's just very interesting um, how this is coming into play and uh, I watch myself, I watch how I change over the years and the things that I thought were, like I said, the be all and end all. And even this now, me thinking that this is something, maybe in a few years I'll go, oh my gosh, <laughs> that was just the base of something else. So this type of work requires you to not be married to anything, not be where you think it has to be this way. Uh, that there are all these rules and and guidelines and all of that because honestly we're only shown what we can handle at the time we're only shown where what our vibration is a match for so to think that if you're connecting to the spirit world or you uh, you know talk to an angel or you had a great meditation that 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 is all there is I don't think most of you would think that anyway but just in case just know there's so much more and again none of us especially on the human level here are going to know it all um because i think there are beings beyond even angels and archangels that we are not in resonance with so we would not be able to hold the vibration and when i say hold the vibration holding a vibration is necessary to have the connection to either see them feel them hear them know them uh, have something where we can take it in we have to be in resonance with that if we're not there's no way it's going to happen there's no messaging coming through that's why when people say I think I heard God I think it's highly unlikely uh, because there's the idea that if any of us were to see God uh, we would die we would implode because that vibration is to the nth degree beyond what my vibration is and what your vibration is. And so a lot of what we're experiencing is, I would say, from that 11th dimension uh, downward. Um, but it's just interesting to think about what all could be beyond there. And so this is what I bring up about animals, that even though they're physically in this world, there are certain animals that are beyond us uh, in vibration and whales would be one of them and whales has been coming up quite a bit so I don't know what's happening there and also I just want to end on this note that this visit this morning from what did I call it Razik Raziel oh, I'm not sure yeah that's what I think it was uh, he he was trying to impress something on me and I got it at the time but like I said now I don't remember what it was and part of it was something that I've talked about before that we're not the only ones affected by everything happening we're not affected by the only affected by the pandemic we're not the only people affected by the pandemic or beings we're not the only dimension that is undergoing transformation. I think sometimes we think it's just us here. It isn't, it isn't. It's anything that is connected to this vibration and frequency is undergoing their own transformation. So the idea of moving from three to five, which is some people are obsessed by this idea now, anything that is in seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, 152, um, they would be moving too. So something that perhaps was in the seventh, we think of the seventh, they might be moving into the ninth and the ninth is moving into the 11th and, and or the 10th or what have you. So just something to think about. Again, all these are very uh, esoteric ideas. It's part of my job to bring those ideas down and have this conversation with you to get you thinking about things. It isn't to prove something to you. It isn't to... Uh, get you to my way of thinking it's simply to say huh have you thought about this because this is what has happened to me and this is how I'm interpreting it so I just want to share that with you and um, if anything else comes up I'll let you know I hope you're doing well take care